Hi, and welcome to this quick start. Today, we're going to learn how to use the Pinecone Vector Database using the Python Pinecone client. We're going to see how to get an API key, initialize our client connection, and initialize a serverless index. Once we've initialized our serverless index, we can then begin adding data to our index and querying it as well. So we're going to get started over here in the Pinecone quick start docs. We're going to be going through this guide here. You can either find this page in the Pinecone docs, just a quick start over here, or you can also find it in the Pinecone examples repo, where you will find the same notebook in the docs, quick tour, hello Pinecone. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Curlab. And the first thing I'm going to do is install Pinecone and also pandas, which is going to help us manage some data later on. Note that we do need to be using the Pinecone client 3.0.0 or above in order to be able to use Pinecone serverless. After this, we can click here to go get our API key. This will take us to app.pinecone.io and you should, after signing in, see a page that looks like this. Now, you'll need to go over to API keys on the left, copy this, and we'll want to put it into our notebook. Now, before we enter our key, we will need to run this. We want to either use or not to use Pinecone serverless. So I'm going to say I do want to use Pinecone serverless. Then you'll want to enter your API key in here. Then we'll come down to here. We're going to use serverless. So we are running this one. And then what we'll need to do is give our index a name. Now you can call your index whatever you like. I'm going to call this one Hello Pinecone. What we'll do is we'll just confirm that this index does not exist. If it does exist, I'm actually going to delete it. If you're running this the first time, you probably will not run into this problem. And I'm going to create my first Pinecone index. Now, when we create a Pinecone index, we need to include a number of dimensions that we can expect our vectors to have. We're using a very small number here for this example. In more real case scenarios, you might see higher numbers such as 768 or 1536 are very common dimensionalities. The metric here of cosine is pretty typical and we are using our serverless spec, which we defined just up here to say that we would like this to be a serverless index. We run that and then we just wait for the index to be ready before we connect to it. Once it's ready, I'm going to connect and we now have our Pinecone index. The next thing that we will do is add some data to it. So I'm going to go ahead. You don't need to use a data frame. You can use any data format you like, but when you do add this information into Pinecone, it should be in a list of tuples containing at least your vector IDs and the vectors themselves. You may also be adding metadata here as well. Okay, we upset those. We see that we've added two vectors. If I describe the index, we should also see the same. We have two vectors of dimensionality three. Now we can go ahead and query our index with the query method. Within the query method, we include a vector. We include a number of other vectors we'd like to return. And we're also going to say that we'd like to return the vectors themselves by using include values. Okay, so you can see that we included the vectors here and here. And because we set top k equal to five, that meant we returned all of our vectors because our vector index only has two vectors. So we actually return both of those. If we were, for example, to return one, we would just return one, as you can see. You can also see your usage when you run this so you can see the number of read units that this query consumed. Now, once we're done, we should go ahead and delete our index to save resources. So we run that. Okay, so that is it for this introduction to Pinecone. We've seen how to get our API key, use it to initialize our connections to Pinecone, create an index, populate an index, and then query it. I hope this has all been useful. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you again in the next one. Bye.